Police officers of Reddit. What are you thinking when you see cases like George Floyd? I was a cop in the military. In the police academy this was one of the things that taught us not to do as it could crush the windpipe. The only time I was ever taught to use chokes and neck holds was in combat training for deployments. But when we got back we always had to attend retraining classes to relearn what we can do stateside. It's amazing that time and time again you see military saying this is exactly not what to do but for some reason the civilian trainers seem to forget to teach the same. Would I rather be a pal to an American soldier versus American cop I'll take soldier every time. Tired. It disgusts me as the job is difficult enough as it is, working mostly in sensitive neighborhoods. Brutality like this makes it far more difficult. How difficult was it for you to build community trust? Did you have to continuously fight against atrocities such as the recent cases? Or was your community more sheltered from those issues? I worked in a place where the population was about 75% black. As a white cop, I very quickly learned a lot about being respectful and how to be tactful. Humor goes a long way and it's very important not to give off any sign of being fearful. They can sense it. You get used to shouts of abuse as you drive by and guys on the corner will try to provoke you by openly drinking beer. Is it illegal? Yes, but you learn to pick your battles. If you do ever need to stop someone and question them, you know that if you take too long, you will suddenly find yourself surrounded by an angry crowd who have no idea what you are asking. People in these areas are almost always reluctant to even be seen conversing with a cop out of fear of being seen as a snitch. It is true that if you do need to make an arrest, there will almost always be some level of resistance, which makes things very difficult as once you have made the commitment to make the arrest, you have to go through with it. I am not in any way making excuses for the cops in this particular video, but it isn't easy. However, the cop with his knee on the poor guy appears to be of the alpha male type of cop. These guys are bullies by nature and very difficult to work with if you personally police to different standards. It's very difficult to intervene as a partner as you will likely be ostracized. You take this route and your career is over. Your social life is over. Your marriage will have problems as cop families are pretty close. The perspective here on the difficulty of intervention needs to be higher up. How many people won't pick a fight at Thanksgiving dinner about Kaepernick? let alone intervene in a case where you know you'll be the only person to pay the price. The cops sitting around didn't know the victim would die. And if they intervened and he didn't die, sounds like they'd be just as ostracized and that would be the end of their career in local law enforcement. The culture is the problem. Since we're tapping into the police community here, can someone please explain what, if anything, the bystanders could have done to help George Floyd? Call 911 and report police brutality? In all seriousness, what is the preventative action here since none of the police officers on the scene, four of which were physically restraining him, reacted to his being murdered right in front of them? Black guy, I've been asking myself this a lot. I mean could you imagine pushing the cop off the guy, and saving Floyd's life, but then being tackled down by the cop's partner in the best case scenario as you get arrested for assaulting an officer? Worst case scenario, they use lethal force on you in self-defense. We're damned if we do, and damned if we don't. The most demoralizing part is that the pleading that, that he couldn't breathe and to check his vitals immediately were ignored. Everyone knew they couldn't help him without potentially risking their own lives is heartbreaking. If you can't reason with the police we are doomed. Here is the only possible thing I could think of in this type of situation. Point your phone at the officer. Hit record and say I'm live streaming this on Facebook. Please don't become famous for killing that man. Even if you are bluffing, the officer is not going to want to take a chance of facing a murder trial. Also, don't be surprised if there aren't new phone apps being developed right now that will be a simple one touch to live stream to news organizations so it will be harder to hide shady behavior. I was thinking about this today when I heard the audio of him pleading for air. I would like to think I shout hey man the guy can't breathe these off. I thought if he didn't would I push the cop off the guy and probably get shot at worst arrested at best or do I watch a man die in front of me I'd but it's fucked up. Edit, I live in downtown Louisiana and now there are protests blocking the 101 freeway. Punishing thousands of citizens that just want to go home.
They are riding on hoods of cop cars and smashing windshields. People will take any opportunity to act like jackasses. What did the people on the freeway do? If anything this will make them unsympathetic to the cause. Edit 2, thankfully they left peacefully and nobody else got hurt. As for the people in Minneapolis taking the opportunity to loot your local businesses especially during a pandemic shame on you. You are the actual jackasses. Begged. Over and over. Repeatedly told the officer he hadn't been moving and probably wasn't breathing. Repeatedly said how long it was. At one point the officer with the knee on his neck looks down at George's face for several seconds. Which in the video it is clear to see his eyes are closed and he is out cold if not already dead. He remains on his neck. An EMT presses his finger to George's neck and walks away. And still, he is on George's neck. Throughout the whole thing there is probably not 10 seconds of time that passes where someone doesn't either call the officer a bump for what he's doing or beg the officer doing nothing to help. Or say he isn't breathing or ask them to stop. And he just stays there. With his knee on his neck. <laughs> Tired after 28 years. Nothing less than murder. All the guys I worked with would never have considered doing something like that. You treat combative in custodies once they're secured as human beings. Nothing should be personal. Once they've been subdued and you are safe as an officer, you stand him up, pat him down and understand that your arrestee is at a low point in his life. Give him some dignity and you'll generally get his respect. It works 90 plus percent of the time. That man was subdued and nobody should have been on him at that point. Key phrase I keep hearing slash reading in these cases, whether bad cop directly suffocates slash strangles someone or fibrillates their heart with a taser, or cracks their skull, or maybe didn't touch them at all is, I can't breathe. Seems to me that this phrase should be an automatic emergency ambulance ride. You shouldn't look at someone who is having difficulty breathing, and then, for example, sit on them, on top of hot asphalt. You get them medical attention before they drop dead. That is, if you don't want them to die. Not a local, am a fed. Five years into the job. George Floyd was murdered and it's fucking disgusting. We're trained that anything involving the neck is a no-go and is considered deadly force. We were also trained that if you make an arrest in a prone position, you search and then immediately move them onto their side or a seated position because the risk of asphyxiation is so great. If a suspect says they can't breathe, believe them and take measures to correct to it. This training is reinforced at least twice a year in our use of force training. These officers deserve to spend the rest of their lives in prison. A police officer in California. I am absolutely disgusted by the officer's actions. When someone is in our custody you must treat them properly. I don't care if they are arrested for murder or forgery. They are a human with a story and they deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. I had tears streaming down my face watching the video of George Floyd. We swore to protect our communities and that's what we set out to do every day. Putting a knee into the neck of a handcuffed man for an extended period of time isn't protecting. A man has lost his life due to the gross negligence of an evil person. May he rest in peace. It makes it harder to protect communities when you lose the trust of the public. These situations hurt you all unfortunately. Honest question, and I'm not saying that you don't already do this, but how come more good cops like you are not vocal about this? Up here. Disgusted. There are 1000 reasons why this shouldn't have happened. Simple, easy, steps that should have been taken. Lessons that policing has learned over the past 200 years and basic things taught in every academy. Make no mistake, this was murder. Maybe not premeditated murder, but nonetheless murder. I will be angry if those officers do not get indicted. He's apparently been involved in at least two other deaths including shooting a fleeing suspect in the back. I dunno given that history premeditation seems reasonable. Create a petition. Get other Leos to put their fucking name and county slash city on the list and say you agree with indictment of another Leo. If other cops publicly speak out and vilify, he push for serious charges at the very least, this kind of behavior then this would foster more trust in the police. Given what you know about the force, if it weren't for the phone, would this have went down differently afterwards? My father retired from the force. As an adult, I learned that my father, whom I love, used to have an ankle weapon with the serial numbers wiped off. Kind of cleared some of the sheen from my eyes. And if not the windpipe it could damage or put pressure on the carotid artery, which can cause a drop in blood pressure, with unconsciousness and possible death as a result, stroke, heart attack and or a number of other serious issues related to circulation. 
everyone was pretty adamant, regardless if it was military or civilian security, that if you go for the neck you're going for the kill. Whether that is with a buttstock, barrel, bayonet or your bare hands. They might survive, but it was not something you should expect. What might be that super cool trick where you can make someone black out in less than 15 seconds on a young and healthy military guard might be deadly on someone with arterial plaques, heart issues or just a birth defect. Coming from the military as well makes this whole thin blue line thing seem so much more bullshit. When we got a shitbag private who couldn't be rehabilitated, we'd toss his ass out. It wasn't worth the drama, or the inevitable disgrace you would bring to our profession. We didn't circle our wagons. <laughs>